All right, cool. Three, two, one. Welcome to Double Fries No Slaw. It's a pop-up episode on a Thursday morning. Myself, Richie Barnes, Harlan Harris, our producer, as well as we lost Richie for a minute, but as well as former Tampa Bay Ray, I'm sorry, former FSU Seminole, current Tampa Bay Ray, Taylor Walls. How are you guys doing today? Good, man. Uh, yes, ready, ready for this off day. Much needed. You know, just living it. Yeah. We want to we wanna chat with you about it for sure. We're super excited for you. When, you. when you got the call up, we were all super jacked. And then you made quite the debut with a couple of hits and um, – came out came out swinging but like you said first off day you've played every single day um that the rays have had a game since since coming up that was much like your college career where if i counted correctly i don't my math's not the best but you played 196 out of 197 possible games only missed one one game the entire time you were up in tallahassee too what's that uh what's that like man is that that grind is wild man to just play every single day yeah, I mean it is, but at the same time, it, you know, as long as you're playing, that's really all that matters. You'd rather be playing than sitting in the dugout, I guess. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, I, I enjoy playing playing every day. You know, if I if I'm capable of being on the field, I want to be on the field. I don't want to be, you know, on the bench feeling like I'm I'm not helping my team, you know, win. Uh, so that's something that I pride myself in. That's really what all the off season workouts. Our four is uh, maintenance and trying to just keep myself available throughout the year. Yeah, for sure. Well, when you so we'll start with your Tallahassee days, and then we'll kind of move into some into some pro stuff. But double fries, no slaw. Obviously, an ode to an ode to Guthrie's. We've asked Meat about this. We've asked a bunch of people about this. Devin, Travis, when he was on, but like, how hard were you hitting those gut boxes when you were in Tallahassee? Uh, pretty hard, especially <laughs> on the later nights. Man, I, uh, where was I? At? I think Birmingham, Birmingham, Alabama. I was there this all season, uh, just doing, you know, getting ready for spring training. And one of the high schools I went to to like do some of my workouts and stuff. That there was actually a Guthrie's right on the like shoulder of the road, right beside re- the road I was trying to go there. And I was like, "Oh, shot! This is the same." I re- I honestly didn't know it was a chain restaurant because the Tallahassee was the only one that I had seen. Yeah. And then I was like, I got to try it out. So I pulled in the drive through and dang, if it wasn't the same place. And that's Dude, exactly it, what I got. Gut box, no, uh, no slaw double fries. Yeah, I know. We, uh, my wife and I were, I did the same thing. I didn't realize they were all over and we were coming yeah. back on a road trip from somewhere in like the middle of nowhere, Georgia. And, uh, I was like, ah, they can't be the same one, but like, let's stop and see. And yeah, same thing, man. Put some extra, some extra and let's. I lost, uh, lost power there for a second. But um, so, talk to us about your time at FSU. Um, only there for three years, but that third year, man, what what a year that ended up being. Um, you know, we've got playoffs going on with baseball. Fortunately, our our season ended a little early there, but still cheering the softball team on. Obviously, um, Super Regionals in Tallahassee, an ACC championship, going to Omaha your final year. What was the experience of that that junior season like for you? Uh, a lot of ups and downs, especially like being uh, the draft year. There was a lot of, I felt like, out exterior pressure to, you know, want to get drafted high or try to get as much money as you could possibly get. So going into that year, it was really stressful. Honestly, looking back at it, I put – way too much stress on myself um and it took me a a while to settle in and to figure out how to cope with the stress of you know okay yeah my my draft is gonna be determined based off my performance but at the same time like i need to at some point settle in and just play the game and so uh it ended up being a fun ride figuring it out at the right time and you know we ended up making it Omaha. What uh, what was it like I mean, toward the end of his career? Obviously, but just one of the absolute legends in in Tallahassee. Um, and what was it like playing for eleven? Like you know, because you 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 got to do something that like all the current players you know aren't able to, right? Like you got to yeah, you got to play for him and the legend that he was. What, what was he like, man? It was competitive. 
that's one word to describe it. I feel like he, uh, no matter what the circumstance was, he was he was going to try to teach you, you know, allow you to learn along the way. But at the same time, he wanted to win. He was going to do what he had to do to win. And I mean, that's ba- that's basically what it boiled down to. He was as old as he was. He was always out in the field with us when we practiced. You know, literally hands on. Whether it was trying to teach a fundamental of how to field a ground ball or whether it was, you know, some team type of defense. And offensively, after every at-bat, he was calling you up to the, you know, the porch of the dugout and walking through that bat with you, telling you what you should have done, what you should My pitcher might be trying to pitch you this way instead of a different, and, you know, instead of a way that you might have been thinking. Uh, so it was very competitive, very hands-on, um, and I guess a very good learning experience. Yeah, for sure. I'll ask you this and then I'll pass it to one of these other guys. But uh, obviously, Meat took over for him. We've had him on several times. Um, love love Mike Martin Jr. as well. Talk to us about him, um, the contrasting styles between him and his dad, you know, and, and your thoughts on him, you know, leading this FSU program. Obviously, got kind of dealt a sore, a sore run with uh, his first year being the COVID year. But uh, talk to us about Meat just, just moving forward with uh, the program. Uh, meat was, I honestly think probably a tad more competitive than, uh, 11 was. Um, but meat was a little more conservative to me as in like, he wasn't as outspoken. He was going to really observe everything from a distance before he kind of put his opinion in. Granted at the time he was under 11. So, I mean, he could have been biting his tongue a little bit, but. I mean, he was just, he was the guy who was going to observe and, and he was, he was really the spokesperson for our team. Like he was the, he was the guy who, you know, usually spoke first, usually controlled the practices as far as like what we were doing. He ran, he was the one who was hitting the fungo, you know, orchestrating everything. And then 11 was really behind the scenes to kind of correct him if he was going in a direction he didn't want to go or you know, maybe if he saw something that Meat wasn't attacking right away, that's when he would kind of, you know, hit the pause button and he would take over himself. So, uh, I mean, I was kind of seeing it firsthand, the slow transition into, you know, me taking over. And it was both of those guys are just super competitive coaches and really good coaches. To play. Yeah. Harlan, why don't you go? I know you got to cut some rapid fire. Harlan produces for us. He's the one that kind of knows some of the guys you know. So I'll let him roll and then. No All picture, right. Ricky can go last. Yeah, I got some quick fun ones for you. Um, I actually played uh, some Juco ball, and I played with Nate Lowe. I think you know him. Okay, and, yeah. And uh, then I played at Valdosta State. But I know a bunch of your teammates, so I- I'll give you some quick ones here. Um, you- do you have any type of pregame ritual or thing you do routine-wise before each game? Uh, no- nothing, like, superstitious-wise, but, mm-hmm. I mean, it's – it all depends. Like it is, it's usually all depends on how I'm feeling. What like at the plate or something like that. I, I usually like to do some type of throwing from shortstop every day. Like uh, like even if we're not taking ground balls, I want to go out there and just have somebody stand at first base where I can just kind of run around the infield making different types of throws. Maybe you know who knows what type of throw I might have to make that night. And I just I want to have already made that by by game time. Um. Hitting wise, I mean, it all depends. It, especially, you know, since you, you know, some. Taylor, I think we lost. I think we lost your audio there for just a sec. Yeah, yeah. You got it. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, you're there. Yeah, can you hear us? Yeah, you're set. Can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. good. So okay, my you're call, good. I had to cancel the call. But uh, back to offensively, it really just depends on how I'm feeling. Some drills I'll mix in that I never really do just because maybe I, feel, I have a feel I need to, you know, alter a mechanic or something like that. But for the most part, it's just swing to get loose. Maybe do a drill or two there to keep my mechanics in center, stay balanced, you know, stay through the middle of the field. And then after that, it's just all like prepping for whoever, whatever guy's on the mound, trying to decide what, what I'm going to approach to be, 
how I'm going to attack him and what I'm going to hunt for. Awesome. You go two in the pink or traditional? Yeah. In your glove. Can you hear me? I can't hear Harlan. Can you hear me now? DJ, can you hear me? Yeah, I, I got you, Harlan. Taylor, can you hear Harlan at all or no? No, I can't. You want me to leave real quick and jump back in? No, no, I don't think it's you. Harlan, what'd you have? I'll ask him. Ask him, um, does he do two in the pink or traditional in his glove? In your glove, do you do two in the pink or you go more traditional? Yeah, two in the pink. Two in the pink and then the index finger out. Um, um, pants up or down? He said pants up or down. Harlan, text him to me and I'll ask him for you. Man, that, that was – I used to do pants down all the time. And then I got here and I started doing pants up for some reason. I, I like both. I'll do both. Lately, I've been going a lot more pants up than pants down. So um, he, if you still can't hear me, I don't know if I can text these to you. I mean, they're just kind of like my notes. Okay. No, you're good. Richie, why don't you jump in for a couple, Richie, and then we'll circle back to Harlan and uh, – get back out here we'll give you some time before your next interview with which uh, i believe with, with the uh, mlb so i'm glad that we won up to them and got you first that, yeah there you go <laughs> richie go ahead hey taylor you yeah taylor man you are obviously a really high draft pick uh third round uh, um but you bounced around a lot I in the minors in either. the first part of your career um and last year the season got canceled because of the pandemic T Richie, hold on one sec. Taylor, why don't you try and jump? We'll edit all this, but why don't you try and jump out and jump out? right back in? Uh, yeah. Let's try and have him jump out, jump right back in, and see if that works. Richie, you do the same thing. Jump out and jump back in. And Harlan, you might as well try it too. I'll I'll stay in so like this won't shut down. All right. So I had them jump out really quick and jump right back in too. Richie, try it now. Hope he's coming back. This is the the joys of live technology here. I know, right, man? This 2021, and we still can't figure any of it out. I, I don't oh know. yeah, Rich uh, Harlan, try it now. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, good. Okay, right, cool. Can we go ahead and wrap yeah, right. yeah, yeah. All right. So, um, have you ever played with yourself in MLB The Show, and do you know your rating in it? Uh. Actually, uh, my brother is actually with me right now, and I'm usually not a, a sports – like, I play video games, but not really sports games. And last night, he had his game hooked up in the other bedroom of my apartment, and he had the show on there, and he was playing last night's rosters. So last night was the first time I, – I just hit with my guy one time. So <laughs> last, last night was the first time I had ever, I guess, used my guy on the show. I don't know the rating, though. How how cool is that? I'm gonna I'm gonna ask before Harlan keeps going. I asked King Griffey Jr. You remember that game, King Griffey Jr. Slugfest? Yeah. I asked King Griffey Jr. about that. Like, hey, did you ever play with your player? He's like, bro, I knew all the cheat codes. Like, it was the game was my game. Like, of course I played with that. So, like, was yeah. that? That's pretty cool. We all grew up playing like Madden and stuff. And so, like, yeah. that's, that's a neat. That's gotta be neat. Yeah, it is, it is cool. I'm. Uh, I don't know why, man. I just I just can't get into sport. Like, I'll play Madden for a week and then I'm done with it. 2K, I used to play 2K a little bit when I was younger, but now I don't even feel the want to to, to play it. The same yeah. way with the show. I just don't know why. But it is pretty cool to get on there and see all the animations, how real they look. All right, so I got two more for you, then I'll be done. And these are uh, – got some former former teammates' opinions and maybe a, a, an old coach of yours' opinion on this one. All right. So uh, you got to face Tyler Holton or Cole Sands. You get a hit, they run 50 poles. You strike out, you run 50 poles. Who are you choosing to, who are you, who are you choosing to face? Uh, and they're two of my buddies, so, so you can answer honestly. I'm going to uh, – that's a tough one. I might, I'm going to say – I'm going to say Tyler Holton. Okay. I'll be sure. I, I'm, I'm going to let him know. I, I, <laughs> I think uh, – I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Sands might. There's a better chance of Sands walking you though. That's a good one. Yeah. 
I don't know. That's a tough question. Sands is gonna Sands is gonna hate those fit poles. I'll tell you that. Uh, yeah, that, that's part of the reason too. I don't want to have to see him, you know, die and run in poles. <laughs> I think I think Holden might be in, might be able to accomplish those poles a little bit easier. All right. So last I one. I don't know though. I saw Sands running playing some basketball in the all season. He was getting up and down the floor well. Oh, uh, okay. All right. So last one. Um, I got some some two opinions on this one. Who okay. is smoother in the infield, you or Gold Glove winner Sherman Johnson? That was at Florida State. I'm gonna have to say myself only because <laughs> only because I don't think I've seen Sherman take ground balls maybe one time. If I have, it's not even resonated with my mind. But okay. I wish I, I wish I did. I wish him and uh, Devin Travis. I wish I would have gotten to take ground balls with them. Awesome. All right, I'm good. Rich, today. Richie, why don't you finish this up? If if your uh, connection's a little bit better, do some pro stuff, and then let Taylor get out of here. <laughs> yeah, can can y'all hear me? Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Well, yeah. The the beauty of going live, right? Um, but Taylor, obviously, uh, made an investment in you with being a third round pick. Uh, but you bounced around the minors a good bit early in your career, and then last year your season was canceled because of the pandemic. Um, was there ever a thought in your head, like, what if this is it? Um, you know, and then obviously you get called up. But what was it like last year, kind of with all the unknown? Uh, I mean, it sucked. There was never the thought of, you know, this may be it. There was, uh, there was definitely unsure thoughts of not knowing what's next. But uh, the the feeling of it not being over was never never a thought that crossed my mind it was uh i mean it was a it was a crazy experience i mean it was it was bittersweet to be honest because i mean it sucked losing the season who knows if my chance would have been or my time would have been last year if that didn't happen but at the same time i got to go home and spend a summer at home that i haven't done since i was 10 years old so uh i actually got to go out on the boat go to the lake and then when we started the alternate side here there were a bunch of coordinators and guys here that I got to work with that I would have never been able to work with if it would have been the regular season. Yeah, man, and, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of websites that kind of rank prospects, and you weren't ranked very high in the raised bar, but I was reading an article from The Athletic. We were just talking about how the front office was just in love with you. Um uh, we're we're losing Richie. I'll I'll wrap it up with some race stuff and then we'll get Richie back on another time. But um I think he was asking just, you know, you you weren't ranked super high in 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 a lot of the projections and stuff, but the Rays really really liked you and wanted to wanted to kind of bring you on and, and make you part of uh of uh their organization. How cool was how cool was that whole draft process coming in and Ended up playing for the Rays and then working through their minor leagues and all that and, and going through it. Uh, I mean, it was sick. I mean, it was just to have an opportunity to keep playing after college was something that, you know, throughout the later years of high school and even the my first year in college, I didn't think was going to be a possibility. But uh, so to kind of see that into fruition and, and happen was, was awesome. Um, and, I mean, uh, you know, after it happened, it was – it was a grind. I mean, the first, to me, the toughest year since I've been in pro ball was the first year I was drafted, that first half season shifting from college to pros and uh, seeing the difference in velocity, seeing the the difference in just how people approach the game. Like, the, just ha really just the team atmosphere isn't the same as it is in college because, you know, guys go up and down so much. It's never the same team every week. Uh, you know, guys are playing more for individually than they are team wise. So, I mean, it was a, it was a different transition, but thankful that the Rays, you know, gave me the chance to do it. Um, talk to, talk to me about that, uh, that team atmosphere. Uh, a lot of people talk about how great, I know you've only been up for a couple of weeks, but a lot of people talk about how just like fantastic that is with the Rays. Um, you know, I know the clubhouse isn't the same as college, but, what has that been like with the Rays for you? Um, um, especially in the big – I mean, it's been amazing. The guys in this clubhouse are, like, just 
have treated me with open arms. You know, it's been everybody has just preached, just be yourself. Don't try to, you know, step outside of your box, you know, be, be who you are and, you know, what, you know, just let everything else take care of itself. And that approach from everyone that I've, you know, have, you know, come into contact with or had conversations with has really just allowed me like to settle in, relax, not worry about anything or, you know, not worry about something that I may, may get embarrassed by doing or, you know, not sure if this is okay to do here, stuff like that. Like just really just come in, be yourself, relax and just have fun. And it's easy to do when you see other people in the clubhouse doing the same thing they're preaching you to do. So, I mean, yeah. They, uh, Joe Madden really installed that when he was with the Rays several years ago. And then another former Noel coach, coach Kevin Cash has really carried it on. And so glad that you're there and, and excited about it. Cause I, I watched a video just yesterday on, you know, the, you know, your, your team it has the best record in baseball, most wins in the league. And, uh, they fielding is the best, but then like compared to the rest of the American league, you know, we're, I mean, I live in, I live here in Tampa, so we'll have to hit the Guthrie's here in Tampa soon, but I, you know, so I'm a big Ray fan, but, uh, you know, we, we don't have the best hitting. We don't necessarily have the, the, the top of the line pitching kind of mediocre to, to above average on those things. Fielding's really, really good, but they kind of just said like the MLB network, which I'm sure they'll ask you about it today, basically just said like, we just think it's the fact that they're so relaxed and they play so loose and they play so easy that statistically they, there's no reason they should be the best team in the league, but those guys are just bought in, you know, to the process. So I, I'm glad that you're there and, and it's really exciting to watch. So, all right, a couple more and we'll, we'll let you go. But, uh, the uh, your first night, a double both right handed and left handed. Talk to me about that, man. That's that's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, that was quite the debut. Yeah, that was a surreal night. Uh, I mean, I was honestly, I was just getting up there hoping that 95 mile an hour still looked like 95 mile an hour. Uh, I didn't want to, I didn't really want, I want this game to speed up on me. I was gonna try to do my best to just relax and and slow the game down. Um, and, and my experience experiences of getting where there's moving levels up or going from college to pro ball is very easy to make the game harder than what it is. If, I don't know if that makes sense, but it's like the, I mean, the 94 mile an hour you see in, at, in college at Florida State is the same 94 mile an hour you're going to see in single A or double A ball here. But it's very easy to make that 94 look 98 or 99. When you go up there, you're, you're thinking the pitches are maybe a little faster than normal and now you're lunging out front to try to hit them. Um, so I was just trying to stay calm, stay, stay really short to the ball, just see the ball really well and, you know, just try to put a barrel on it. And after my first at bat, when I kind of got a good piece to center field and I, you know, I was able to get, get in the box, dance with the pitcher a little bit, get some, get my rhythm there. That gave me the confidence really to set the tone for the past few weeks to, to know that, I okay, this is the same. You know, this is the same thing that I've been doing the past two, three years. So, I mean, it's like it's no different. I'm just in a different ballpark with different teammates. Yeah. And then you, you ruined one of my questions that I was going to ask you uh, before last night, but I was going to ask how hard you were going to pimp your first home run. But talk to me about uh, that feeling of getting that first one out of the park last night. No, it was a good feeling for sure. I'm not, I don't hit them enough to, to really pimp them. If I pimp it, then. I, it's very rare that I'll pimp a ball. It might happen, but um, it was <laughs> for like a walk was, off or something. For like a walk yeah, off, I need I need a it's, flip. <laughs> it's usually it's, the the issue usually isn't I don't want to pimp it. The issue is usually I'm trying to I'm so used to just trying to get out of the box and you know get the second or third to where by the time it, I realize it's it's a home run, I, it's too late. So it's right. like so that's usually my issue. But uh, no, it felt good. It, to be honest, I felt I've felt some better balls flush off the barrel since I've been here that I thought might have had a chance to go that didn't go compared to that one. So, being that that one went, I was like, "Dang, really? That one went out of all the other ones that I hit?" But uh, no, nah, it was a great feeling. Like seeing seeing Soto going back to the track and then like not having any more room to run and still seeing him looking up, I was like, "Finally, finally, I got one enough to get out of here." But it was uh, it was pretty cool. I, I, I wish we could have won though. Yeah, no, no doubt. Hoping for the, uh, the, the big series this weekend, uh, Baltimore, right. Um, yeah. coming to town. So, 
Um, excited for you guys. Hey, one one other thing that we didn't mention: uh, Father's Day coming up in just a couple of weeks. You guys just had a new addition personally in your family. Congratulations on the uh, on the new baby. We're, we're celebrating my kids like first birthday. It it flies, and you'll be there again this time next year, hopefully with a World Series title uh, in right. addition to it. But um, congratulations there, man. We're we're super happy for you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, well, cool, man. Thanks so much for hanging out. Um, you know, we wish you all the best of luck. Thanks for doing this. Thanks for putting up with our uh, technology problems in 2021. The whole world's on Zoom, and we still can't get it figured out. But thanks for uh, thanks for hanging out, man. We'll we'll have to get you on again sometime. And like I said, we'll hit Guthrie's at some point when I get Harlan and meeting all these guys down to Tampa next year. There you go. All right, y'all take care. All right, buddy. Thank you so much. Taylor.